Right, so it is finally time for the recommitment ceremony. This season has been an absolute roller coaster. Ed and Liz got off to a bad start as Ed cheating led them to failing the very first group therapy session. And things didn't get any better in the second one, with Liz exposing Ed's lack of stamina in the bedroom. The third therapy session was bizarre and unhelpful, but thankfully at least unproblematic with the two of them finding out about their traumatic past lives in regression therapy. Things were relatively smooth sailing from that point onwards until in the last episode, Ed took his feud with Jovi way too far on the group boat ride, which led to Jovi confronting him and Liz having to jump in to protect him. At the end of the last episode, Ed and Liz had a massive fallout as a result of Ed's behaviour, leading to huge renewed uncertainty about the future of their relationship. Well, tomorrow, each couple will decide if they're going to recommit to each other or if their relationship has run its course. But first, there's one final group therapy session. So everyone arrives ready to gather around the fire pit to discuss where they're at and how they're feeling. And things aren't looking good between Ed and Liz. Let's play nice. Ed and I are not in a good place. Ed's behavior so close to the end of the retreat makes me scared to recommit to him. Although this sucks for Liz, it really is a wake-up call she needed. I mean, it seemed like they genuinely believed that all of their problems had gone away after that past life therapy session, and that just so clearly couldn't have been true. Anyway, the therapists set everyone down and say they want to discuss what everyone's learned, where their minds are at, and how they're feeling about tomorrow. When it comes around to Ed, he says that although there were difficulties today, he's prepared to work through his problems with Liz. Although that sounds nice, it kind of comes across like he wants to be able to move past the whole situation without being held accountable for his behavior. He also goes on to say that he doesn't want the boat journey to ruin all the apparent progress he's made. I hope we'll make it, I really do, but I know that I am leaving this village as a changed person with a lot to work on. Yeah, he's right that he's got a lot to work on, but will someone please get him to say out loud how he thinks he's changed? I genuinely cannot think of one way in which he's improved as a person since he first appeared on 90 Day Fiancé over three years ago. So how he thinks he's improved in the last two weeks is beyond me. But annoyingly, the therapists continue enabling him. The awareness that both of you gained through the counseling process was enormous. So now you do have the tools to be able to make choices. If the past life therapy hadn't already, this just seals the fact that she isn't competent enough to be dealing with Ed here. Go back to the very first videos in my Big Ed playlist and you'll see that he's never lacked self-awareness after the fact. His problem has never been recognizing what he did wrong in hindsight, it's been changing his behavior as a result of it. I had the exact same hopes when I first heard him self-reflect, but the fact that she doesn't know that this is a fundamental part of who he is just means that she didn't do her homework on him before they started. So it's no wonder that they've not been able to address any of the actual issues in their relationship. Well, next it comes to Yara and Jovi. Yara says that she doesn't want to badmouth her husband, so Jovi should go first. So he talks about going to the strip club and how he's ashamed of his behavior. And then the therapist asks Yara how she feels about forgiveness. To be honest, I'm just, it just happens too quick. I'm not ready to talk about that. I'm not ready to think about that. I'm just, and, and it, I didn't even process. The therapist says that forgiveness is as much for her as it is for Jovi because it will allow her to move on with the relationship without carrying all that weight around with her. It's weird though, I get that forgiveness is important in certain situations, but I feel like they should be putting more of the responsibility on Jovi to actually earn that forgiveness because otherwise he just kind of gets away with his behavior. Once again, they offer no real help other than that moving forward. So they then move on to Kalani and Aswelu who revealed to the group the conclusion they reached earlier on this evening. We're not going to be together anymore and we're gonna try to just co-parent for our kids. Unsurprisingly, no one was particularly shocked. Aswelu doesn't really say anything and then reveals in the interviews that whilst he was sitting there, he was just completely focusing on containing and hiding his pain. Ed says to Kalani that he isn't worried about her because she's strong and beautiful and that he has some advice for Aswelu. Going through a divorce, my daughter was like one and a half when we got a divorce and they can become your strength. My daughter was my strength. Some rare empathy and actual good advice from Ed. Although I don't really know why he felt the need to direct that at Aswelu. I mean, I know that this was more of Kalani's choice, but that doesn't mean that this is gonna be easy for her. And no doubt she'll need to find strength in her kids at times too. 
I know what you're going through, and it sucks, but I'm telling you this, man, it will get better. This is like the Kelly situation all over again. Having to take advice from Big Ed of all people on national TV, knowing that you didn't make it but he might have done, just will not be helping them at all. Well, the group session ends and it becomes clear that Ed and Liz really are in a bad place right now because Liz ends up sleeping on the sofa. I feel like Ed always allowing her to be the one sacrificing her comfort when things aren't going well says a lot about who he prioritises in the relationship, which is pretty damning of him and it. Anyway, the morning after, we catch up with Ed and he's aware of how bleak the outcome looks. I just, get, I get so scared sometimes, but give me one second. Why are you getting emotional? Cause in a past life, I was somebody that was thrown away. Not this past life nonsense again. Get over it, Ed. Honestly, why did the producers give him this ammunition in the first place? He is never going to stop taking us on this guilt trip. And not only is it for something that didn't even happen to him, it almost certainly didn't even happen to him in a past life. And then Liz, in my 13 breakups, she's, she's never given up. So I'm hoping for the best. Well, unsurprisingly, Ed doesn't attempt to make any amends before the ceremony. The only one who does is Jovi. Beforehand, Yara has a therapy session which helps her realise that it shouldn't be her feeling ashamed for Jovi's actions. She talks to him and tells him how she feels, and Jovi said that if he knew how insecure it made her feel, he would have acted differently. If you don't want me to do that and you're expressing your emotions to me, I will not go back. Because I didn't think that I was hurting you the way that you're telling me now. I rate what he's saying, I just don't know if I believe it. I mean, come on, not only has she expressed her feelings about him going to the strip club several times before, but he also went a step further this time and actually messaged one of the strippers. Yara shouldn't have to set out every single action he shouldn't do in the relationship. He's a grown man and he's married, he should be able to figure it out himself. Anyway, Yara then joins up with the girls and when Liz arrives, they ask her how she's feeling about Ed. You just said to dump uh, Ed and not go to the ceremony? I, so that's what I'm here to tell you, Liz. I'm just not feeling like I'm imagining tonight to go. I'm just not it's really not... feeling that vibe. It would be so depressing finishing this two weeks, feeling like nothing has changed, especially with the false sense of security thinking everything was going great just 24 hours ago. This is just not how anyone going into a recommitment ceremony would want to be feeling. I'm emotionally just, I'm just emotionally done. I'm done. I'm done with this place. I'm done with therapy. I don't know if I'm done with my fiance. I'm just fucking done. Liz says that she's scared for the future because as much as she wants one with Ed, it's impossible to plan one with him. He's just too unstable. And so as a result, she really doesn't know if she's going to recommit to him or not. Well, with that, it's finally time to get the ceremony started. After all this build up, it's time to find out what the couples have decided. So first up are Angela and Michael. Although things have been okay with them recently, especially with Michael avoiding all of the drama to do with the strip club, Angela is still wounded from Michael hurting her in the past. I do love you, Michael, with all my heart. But these are divorce papers. And it breaks my heart that I had to go this far. Wow, this is some play. So just for some backstory, Michael and Angela have had several big fights within the last year. And in last season's Tell All, Angela revealed that she had proof that Michael was being unfaithful to her. She was really close to divorcing him then, but she wanted to give him one more chance so that she could make a final decision here and now. Oh God, I never knew she took it serious until this very moment. I think this gonna be the end of the road for both of us. This whole thing has been so funny, by the way. How have we just accepted it as normal that everyone has been taking it in turns walking around with an iPad on a stick with Michael's face on it? I did wonder why they bothered inviting them given Michael couldn't physically attend. But Angela has been involved in so much of the drama this season, I'm sure the producers have absolutely no regrets about it. Anyway, Angela says that they're very far off being in a good place and that she hasn't been able to fully heal since Michael betrayed her, but that ultimately she is still his wife. And I'm going to back you and all the help you need. And I'm going to rip all of this up. Because I truly love my husband. Thank you, baby. 
So Angela recommits to Michael. She says that she loves him and that she hopes that he never takes that for granted ever again. In return, Michael promises to always be honest with her, to be faithful to her, to love her and to make her happy. So with the first couple recommitting to each other, next up, a Kalani and a Swelu. Although their marriage is coming to an end, Kalani commits to building as good a friendship as possible with a Swelu for the benefit of their children. And I want to co-parent the best that I can with you so that we can still have a very strong family. And I just want to make sure that we always put our kids first and just help each other out. Next up is Asuelu's turn. He starts off by saying that today feels like the worst day of his life, but ends up saying essentially the same things Kalani did. Ultimately just committing to being her friend and to raising their kids together as amicably as possible. And I just want us to love and respect to each other and trust to each other from here to the future. He also says that he wants to take time to show his appreciation for everything she's done and apologises for every time he's done something bad, hurt her feelings or not treated her properly. He finishes off by saying that he hopes she can forgive him for everything he's done so that they can move forwards with their new friendship. Well, I do forgive you and I would like to move forward and be friends. Yeah. Aww. Honestly, it is so nice to see mature aspects of a relationship on the show for once. I mean, I obviously condemn the degeneracy of the infidelity, and we'll get to the other accusations later, but the fact that they've realised that it's not meant to be, but agreed to continue to have a healthy friendship and raise their kids together is admirable. I mean, can you imagine how Ed would act if after two years of marriage, Liz turned around and said that she wanted a divorce. We joke about his behaviour a lot of the time, but that is scary to think about. Well, anyway, with Kalani and Asuelu committing to being friends and raising their kids together, it's now Yara and Jovi's turn. Jovi starts off saying that he wants to work on his trust and communication, that he wants to make Yara feel beautiful and loved, that he wants to give her and their daughter Mila more of his time, and that he wants to give her everything she wants and needs in a relationship. I want to give you more special romantic moments to make you feel appreciated. Aww. Aww. Can I give you a hug? I thought hard about this. <laughs> Off the back of a rough couple of days, this does feel like papering over the cracks a little bit, but at least it's a happy ending for now. Well, Yara then steps up and seems to be reflecting a lot on what she learned in therapy earlier on, essentially committing to communicating better to prevent problems rather than having to react to them afterwards. I promise you to choose happiness and love and not uh, shame and anger. And I love you so much. So despite their troubles, Yara and Jovi recommit to each other. That means that of the five couples that started this show, two have ended their relationships with one couple leaving and one couple committing to being friends and two have recommitted to each other. So with things finally in the balance, last but not least, it's Big Ed and Liz's turn. And Ed starts off in the most Ed way possible. I want you to know how truly lucky you are to have found such a beautiful catch. Oh my gosh. I had, I had to. If things were going well between the two of them, this joke might have got a chuckle from Liz, but to make it under the current circumstances is so tone deaf. At the start of the season, Liz's biggest issue with Ed was his inability to take their relationship or this process trying to fix it seriously. And all he's doing is showing that nothing's changed there either. You are one of the kindest, warmest, and loving woman, mom, and fiance. Liz is actually so annoying sometimes. How is she going to well up at that transparent and two-dimensional nonsense after everything that came before it? It's like she completely forgets everything he's ever done wrong, literally the second he says something even remotely romantic. You make me want to strive to be a better man. You're making me a better son, a better father, and a better partner. And this isn't true either. He says she's making him a better son, but he kicked his 84 year old mother out of his house so that Liz could move in and they stopped speaking for months. He also barely ever speaks to his daughter Tiffany because she hates the fact that he's dating someone younger than her. And he's just as toxic a partner as he's ever been. Liz, you have never given up on us. And I wanna ask you for the very last time, will you marry me? There's something not so subtly manipulative about the way that he said that she's never given up on them. It's like if she realises that he isn't a good partner and wants to leave, that it's her fault for giving up. And anyway, this whole proposal kind of takes away Liz's chance to speak, doesn't it? 
Can I please give you my answer after I speak? Oh, shit. I screwed that up. Oh, I really I screwed that up. What a surprise. They've had, at the very least, two weeks to prepare for this moment. And this little divvy couldn't put two of his remaining brain cells together to figure out that this isn't how this works. Fortunately for Ed, though, Liz stands up to say her vows and, for whatever reason, says that she loves him, that she will move to Arkansas with him, and that she's got one more thing for him. <laughs> will you marry me? Oh my god! How did you get that? So apparently Liz got that ring over a year ago and there hasn't been a good time to give it to him since. Which first of all, again, is another damning indictment of their relationship. But also it's just boring. I mean, how many times are they gonna propose to each other? I know Liz threw an engagement ring away and Ed asked for one back at the end of the last tell-all, but they need to stop milking this whole play because it loses significance every time they do it. I want you to have this ring so you know that I am forever committed to you. Wow, yes, I will marry. Oh, wow. <laughs> no, 14th breakup. <laughs> so I guess they're still getting married. So what's new? Like, yeah, they're recommitting to each other, but unlike everyone else, they're not committing to any improvements. Also, I know it was a joke, but what a tragic admission. Earlier on in the season, I was speaking about them having broken up 10 times before, because that was the number in the tell -all at the end of the single life season two. That means that they've broken up an additional three times in the few months since then. That is just insane. There's always gonna be slip ups, but I definitely, truly believe that Ed has learned and grown from this. Thank you. That means a lot. Sorry, what has he learned and how has he grown? I feel like I'm losing my mind here. What is it that these two are seeing that none of us are? I guess for now, we're gonna have to wait until the next season to see, but I will not be holding my breath. Well, with the ceremony over, it's now time for the after party. And the couples aren't the only ones looking to put their problems behind them. Yo, me, I love you. Let's put all the bullshit behind us and let's start fresh. Yes, 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 yes. Despite this diplomacy, I genuinely think that Jovi would do pretty much anything to never have to see Ed ever again, including giving up the strip club, which is saying something. Anyway, with all the other couples recommitting to each other romantically, Aswelu stands up to give a speech. I'm so thankful that you, all of you come here tonight, Aww. even though we not make it, but you guys make it. You guys did make it. She has got to be 10 wines deep with those slurs, but Liz is right. They made it to the end and settled on the right outcome for both them and their family. Staying together isn't a win if you aren't right for each other and continue to live an unhappy life together, which is something I'm not sure Ed and Liz have recognised yet. Can I you guys are friends. For the new beginning. For your kids. For the new beginning. For the new beginning. You know what? I wonder if this is going to be one of those things where now the pressure's off, they're going to be like, maybe this could work after all. Although, given all the stuff Kalani's been posting on Instagram whilst the season has been airing, which I'm guessing started after they finished filming, it doesn't sound like they're in a good place right now. Like, they never got around to addressing the accusations in the Instagram story I showed a few episodes ago. And after that, Kalani uploaded this Instagram story when the boys went to the strip club. But as far as the episode goes, they seem to just walk off happily ever after. And speaking of happily ever after, Ed and Liz are now looking forward to what's next we're ready to move on to our lives and start our family and i feel like i'm more ready to get married than i've ever been um ever what an absolute waffler every single time they're back on track he's happier than ever or more sure than ever but we all know it's just the same old cycle repeating itself and in true head and liz fashion they walk off into the night with a bottle of wine each I would genuinely put good money on the fact that they went back to their room, got drunk, and had another fight. Well, whatever happened next, what a season it has been. And as always, this is no doubt far from the last time that we'll see 90 Day Fiancé's most infamous couple. With the pair set to get married and move to Arkansas together, there is no way that the cameras aren't going with them. So if you want to catch the start of the next saga as soon as it's out, make sure you're subscribed down below. Thank you for watching and for all of your nice comments and messages throughout the saga. I really hope you enjoyed it. 
and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.